Good morning, it's Vaughan at westcoatbellpottery.ca in Nova Scotia, Canada. Um, I have a little carving um, test here. I've got some new tools from Bill Wright. Um, he'd seen my videos uh, carving and it, so he thought he could make some tools that would be useful for carving. So these are kind of like prototypes for him. So they will possibly be for sale later on, but, um, but I'm just testing them out. Um, so I just thought I'd do this quick video. So it won't be as much about um, the actual uh, carved tile as more about the tools. Um, so this is what I have. There's like, um, this is just a pin tool. This is different, but these ones, um, I can hold it so you can see, have a, a little hooked edge. I've never used a tool like that. And there's another one here, a little hooked edge. And they have different polished sides. Um, so I'll test these out. I think these will be useful mostly for really dry clay. Um, then this one, uh, it's a little heavy um, on the actual size of the tool, I think. You can see it there. Um, it's got quite a thickness to it, so I'm not sure about that one. And there's another one even thicker there. This might even be more useful as a trimming tool uh, or a hole making tool for a teapot. I'm thinking that one could be useful for. This I've already tried and I love. This out of all the, I've, I just carved almost practically a whole tile using that tool. It's really good. Um, this one is similar to uh, a Kemper tool. Uh, and so I know I'm going to like that. And then there's another one of those hooked tools, which I'm not sure how I will apply those. My guess is when it stays very dry, these will be very useful. And then this one, I think I'll really like too. It's so similar to the others. Um, and, you know, the nice thing about them is these ones, the handle is thick enough so you can roll it a little bit as you're carving to actually um, get a more interesting mark. But I'm thinking these three are going to be really useful. And these ones, maybe for a different application, because um, I see you used for those for making holes in pieces for colanders and teapots. And then the other ones for doing really tiny detailed stuff um, on very dry clay that, well, not totally dry, but very dry leather or clay. Um, and this is the tile that I'm carving. It's a pretty big tile. Um, So I do these 13 and a half inches square, and then they shrink down to um, about 12 inches square. So that's a good inch and a half. Um, is that 10%? Uh, no, that's more like 12, 13% at least shrinkage. Um, but anyway, um, it's not quite leather hard at the moment. In fact, it's a little soft. So when they're like this, I tend to do the drawing. Uh, and I'm just using a little pin tool um, and it's um, got sharpened end on one end and a little tiny ball end on the other end. Um, and this is, I don't remember who made this because I've taped it all up, but this I've had this for decades. And it's just like you can make this with a nail, basically. But, um, but anyway, I'm going to draw this whole thing out. And it's simply a matter of, uh, I've got red clay, and I've shown this in another video, how do I prepare a slab? It's red clay with white over the top. And then some areas have got yellow over the top. Uh, and then you've got a layer of black over the top of everything. And it's all colored slip. So it's basically um, 40 ball clay, 20 um, EPK, KLN, 20% silica, 10% OM, 10% oh, FRIT 3110, and 10% potash feldspar. Custer feldspar, I like to use. Um, and that's the slip recipe, and then you add about 10% black stain to get the black, or whatever the color you want to do. I just drew it out um, using this little noodle needle tool, um, and um, it's a bit soft to start doing the carving. Um, I was leaving a little bit of a burr, if you can see down there, um, and so Ideally, when you make the mark, the, the debris just falls away. So there's a very short margin where you can, or short area where you can actually carve perfectly, because just short time after when it carves perfectly, it's too dry. 
uh, and on a large piece like this with carving, it's really tough to figure that part out. Um, so I like to start when it's a bit soft, um, so that I can get it finished before it's too dry. But you know, it takes about five, six, seven hours to carve one. So, um, so basically, it's uh, a little bit uh, you know, tricky. Anyway, so I'll leave it a little while, and uh, after an hour or two, I'll check it again. Okay, the drawing is now done, so I'm going to move over to using the tools. It's about two hours later, so the surface is a bit drier, uh, and I'm going to um, try all the tools out. This is the tool that I tried, and it's my favorite. Um, and so basically, it isn't really nice. It catches the clay nicely, and you can twist it to get a thin line or a thick line just by a roll of the fingers. Gives you a chance to create something a little bit more irregular rather than just repetitive. So that one is a really nice tool. This is a different tool. It's a ball stylus. Uh, this isn't one of Bill's tools, but this is the one I use to draw and get thicker lines without it digging into the clay very easy because it's got that ball into it. Because if it was just a sharp point, you would simply be cutting in. This sort of rolls the clay right over. So I love this tool for creating these little kind of starry night kind of Van Gogh type um, appearance. See how the, the, the burr is coming up on the tool, not on the clay itself. So I just wipe the tool clean. It's a bit of a process to every time you lift the thing, you've got to lift the clay off, but you get used to it. But it's awful if the clay sticks to the tile instead of the tool. And that's what it was doing before. So these ball styluses, I think uh, uh, several different companies make them. But you should definitely have one of these in your um, armory. This is a nice tool. I actually wore the other end out. Oh, this tool is decades old. So it was a narrower end on this, on the other end, and I, don't, I just wore it off. But this one has been worn out quite a bit too. This is also decades old, and it still has a bit of a ball end to it, but it gives you a slightly smaller mark. I like the other tool better because it doesn't uh, dig down as deep because it's so easy with it. You've got to be so gentle when you've got a thinner tool like this one. So now I'm going to move over to using this tool again. Um, which gives you the chance, as you'll see, to actually um, do a thin line and also get a thick line with the same pull. So thin, thick. Thin, thick. You can keep doing that all over. You hear the pigeons? I'm not sure if that will show up on the video or not. They make that little soft cooing noise. It's very relaxing, good for blood pressure. 
thin, thick, thin, thick. All I did was twist my fingers a little bit like that. So I just carved a tile the other day with nothing but this and I was able to create just about every mark I wanted from it. So this tool, I would tell Bill to start producing it. It's not hard, I mean, it's it's not a shiny varnish either, which is why it it's rolls a little bit easier in your hand. If it was varnished smooth, maybe it wouldn't be as easy to do that without it slipping. Look at that, just thin to thick in that little area there. So here, I'll do it again, thin to thick. And then thick to thin. Now thick. So thin to thick. And I can roll the two over. Okay, well, you've got the idea, right? So I'm just going to keep using this for a bit and put you on stop motion. Okay, now I'm going to try this tool, um, which is a little bit different. Um, where is the other one? I've been using this one, and I love this one. This one's more rounded, um, so I'm not sure if it'll. It may cut too deep um, before you get to widen the cut. So we'll see. Anyway. It can, it can still get a narrow and then a wider line, but it's not as wide um, as the other tool gets. But it can still do the little twist and pull and get a wider and a narrow and a wide and a narrow. So narrow, wide, narrow, but it's not as dramatic. But I'm leaving more black in between because there's less width in the marks, which I didn't want, but I just moved that. That was easy to get and correct that. But it, once again, it cuts really nice. So I think these tools are fine the way they are. They hold well in the hand. And the wire is thin enough so that it cuts easily and it's not leaving a burr since I've allowed this clay to dry out a little bit. It's what I call perfect carving consistency now. Well, I think you get the idea, I'll put you on stop motion again.
Okay, now I'm using this. This is a Kemper tool I'm using here because it has two needles close together at the end and it makes really interesting uh, parallel lines that you can take advantage of either sideways to create the shadows or you can actually get the parallel lines. But, so this one, I like this tool a lot. Of course, this is potentially, you could have three lines, three uh, pieces of metal in a row. And you can um, just use sewing needles to do something like this in a piece of clay, Fimo clay, if you wanted to make a tool like that. But this tool's got a kind of bevel on the on the ends of the wire, so it actually has a nice, and I keep sharpening it to give a flatness to the actual, not sure if you can see these kind of things, but. Very nice day outside today. So the crows are having fun. So the sails of the ships I just paint in using white slip over the top of black slip. So I have to do two or three coats of white over the top of the black slip, but it builds up the, the, the actual depth of the color too. So it gives a sail of three dimensional feel. That's why I like doing it that way rather than just carving back to the white. to do the whales. Got a lot to do yet, but some detail stuff. But I use a ball tool, which I like to create a sort of wave pattern using this little ball tool. I'll put you on stop motion for that. Okay, this is the other tool that's very much like um, a Kemper tool. It's got a nice V-shaped thin guitar string kind of uh, cornered piece, like a triangle at the end. Um, so it will probably do really nicely for just pulling lines down. You can turn it, you know, 360 degrees and create like a porthole in a ship.
So the piece is now pretty much finished as far as the carving goes. And I painted a couple of things in just to add a little bit of color. Um, you can see it's very time consuming and very detailed. So these pieces do take a long time to do. Um, my favorite tool out of all these uh, ones that, and I, I didn't try all of them, but this was the favorite tool. Very nice, I would get one of those. This one is also very similar to the Kemper tool. Um, but the only thing I would suggest is like the end, when you buy these tools, you should have you know, spare heads with it. So you buy the tool and then you just have to replace the end. Um, and that way the handle doesn't have to be replaced all the time. This one I used a little bit um, and it's useful. Um, but it, um, it's not, it's not my favorite out of the, the, the three of these tools. Um, but it's still useful. It's a nice loop tool to give you a ni nice group of marks. So I would say that one works fine just the way it is. And the other tools I didn't even try. Um, these two tools I would use, um, rather than carving like this, they would be used for fluting. So I'll try these tools on some fluting later on. And then we had these tools which I've never seen anything like this before. Um, so I'm gonna have to try these uh, and see how they work um, and um, do those on the next piece.